Um, hello, Mitchu here. But you can call me however you like. And English is not my first language, so I might be a bit awkward doing this review. I'm not a professional reviewer, and it is actually my first video on my new channel, which is strictly vaping related. And the pictures behind me are my builds, just a few. I've done quite a lot of builds. Some of you know that I do like to tickle, and I dial by 0.1 millimeter in terms of height in general. But yeah, I thought it would be nice to have my build pictures behind. My friend struggled with his bridged final and asked if I could find a sweet spot for him. I was happy to give it a go and have used it exclusively since I came back to Korea. When I started vaping about three years ago, it was a golden era for squonking and I used only Convergent and Wicked RDA. Wicked from Wick was certainly the most flavorful RDA. So I had a relatively higher expectation from this Bora bridge, even though I'm not a very fan of Bora systems in general, which I would explain after the presentation and the build session. This is one of the most hyped and highly rated RBA and um, let's dive into it. All right, welcome to my build stations. Just for the display, I have two Batiblums that I love and also my most used RDAs, Narda, Naraka, Naraya, Convergent, Skyfall, MRT, Airlet Remaster, and Strybog. Also, I have borrowed Tank Ready and Flush Mount from Faith by Inushi and also Derlo. Okay, let's open up the package. This rubber sand is very good. This is to slide the broad glass when it is bone dry and it works great. Your airflow pins 1.52, 2.53 and 3.5 millimeter that I'm going to use and the deck and chamber and two chimney this one is supposed to be for MTL but how I believe the MTL is that the restriction is controlled by the air hole hitting the coil not by the chimney this one might just reduce the flavor and I don't think it has to be included and also the chimney that I'm going to use and this one is supposed to be four millimeter and let me just check it is about four millimeter inside and you have this tool this is very good because if you want to clean it out slowly then you change the liquid or so you just push it unscrew it it's so easy it's just a very good tool that they included it's very subtle also, they give a panda button for a billet box. And also, you have the integrated drip tip. Very nice. The bore itself is about 5.9 millimeter, but the inside, the bottom is about 4 millimeter. So there is a bit of conversion going on here. But I'm not too sure if there was a purpose of making it 4mm in here and 6mm in here. If anyone knows, please leave a comment here. Here's the 510 adapter, which you will use on top of the mode, your build tab or ohm reader. I'm going to use on Dani Mini because it is, yeah, die codes is obviously one of the most accurate chips. So let's start the building. I'm going to use 3.5 millimeter airflow and let's screw this in. If I look at the deck, <laughs> it's just like an RDA. You put your coil here and you make a U shape of the cotton and the liquid comes in and wicks. It's just so simple. I think it is probably the easy stack 
I've seen from bridges. Yeah, it's just so simple. It was, it was so easy to work with. I had no issues for um, flooding or condensation or I don't know dry heat at all. When you want to change the airflow pan, you can just unscrew and screw it from the bottom. And I think it's a great design. It's fairly simple. One thing I noticed when I received this bridge, this part was bent. For the next version, I hope this could be thicker so that no user can experience this. I'm pretty sure it will be resolved. And also, can you see this cutout? Since this goes like that, this cutout is actually to hold your cotton inside. And also, it's a very small chamber because there is a size restriction for the borrow tank. The depth is only 14 millimeter. So that's why the chimney section is just about 10 millimeter. The widest is about 16 millimeter. But yeah, it's a very small chamber, very reduced chamber. There's no doming going on. Yeah, it's just straight square, which I'm going to mention a little more later. Okay, let's screw this part. You don't need to screw this very tightly because you will unscrew this one together. No need to screw very tightly. And okay, let's start the building. This coil is 30 gauge inside, 38 gauge outside, tricore fused clapton. What I want to do is reduce the coil mass because the chamber size is so small. You do not want the very rowdy coil inside because chamber size is so, so small. Otherwise, the flavor would just crunch up and you wouldn't get very defined flavors out of it. So I'm going to make a small coil, but there's one thing I'm going to be making sure. So this is 2.5 millimeter inner diameter. Hold it tight because I want to make sure that all my builds have the consistent inner diameter for the consistent wicking purposes. And then I'm going to have it as five wraps. The reason is because you do not want this airflow to hit the coil leg. It will make it very turbulent. So I'm going to hit this airflow pen onto the center of the coil. Since I'm going to use 3.5 millimeter, I'm going to have five wraps like that. Building is so simple, just very, very simple. If you've done Haku Vena or I mean any other RDAs, it can't be simpler than that. Just poke one leg inside here and place your coil jerk onto the deck and screw it down. If you may break your allen key, that's the size of the screw, which I'm going to use it. If you did the first part, just slightly position your coil and then screw the other part. And position your coil once again. And then, since I've done quite horizontal, not diagonal, it's because I want to twist it and make the coil closer to each other to make sure it lines up with this cutout. So what I'm going to do is just to tighten it. Tighten the coil like that on the other side. Just the same process, just tighten it like that. You want your coil to be right center, right center inside this stack. And you can see it is perfectly diagonal and 
it is along with the cutout and you can see that the airflow I'm not sure if it can if you can see that but the airflow from the bottom does not hit the coil lug if you end up hitting the coil lug by the air you will experience a very turbulent vape that's something I've noticed from building Kennedy Kennedy RDA or some bottom airflow RDAs so even though I want to reduce the coil mass as much as possible I still want to remain a length of the coil to be a bit wider than the airflow pen. This time you can just do that if your coil is quite thin but I'm lazy so just cut your coil completely flush with the wall like that and also the other side cut completely flush because you do not want it to short very nice and then I'm going to remove the hot spot so just merge the coil first and just just scratch where the coil goes red like the hot spot yes The coil height is completely in line with the deck. You do not want to go higher than that because you might get stroke hit if your nicotine level is higher. Or you might end up touching this chimney, which is bad. And also to reduce the condensation, you do not want the cotton to touch on the top. So the height of this part is good enough. Your coil is ready. I use TFC, I use cotton bacon, but for build test, I just use cotton lace because it is already measured out as 2.5 millimeter. Before you lick it, just clean your hands completely. <laughs> it is an obvious thing and do not disturb the strands of your wick just gently gently very gently merge the one end and poke one side pull your tweezer out and slightly poke it out so then you can grab it and then I like to make sure my cotton is quite tight inside so just slide it very gently like that and also the other side just slide a little bit like that and it's pretty tight the cotton is pretty tight So people who follow my Instagram or see my, see my build pictures on Facebook know that I do fluff the cotton for my RDAs but there's no need for this RBA because it saturates very very well and if you fluff the cotton it might oversaturate and if it happens just place your cotton on this part so that it blocks the juice past slightly but normally you do not have to do that I'm just going to pull out some excess of cotton like cotton lump and at the edge I'm just going to mix the strands of the cotton quite straight so I'm just going to fluff only the end of it so that I can see that 
which part of the cotton is clumped inside. Like that. And this part was squished in, so I'm just going to make the cotton to have some volumes so that the air can come inside the cotton to fill the liquid when it is wicking. And then I just want to give a balance between the cotton. So if this side is a bit thicker, I'm just going to thin out the cotton just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit. And then I have the equal amount of cotton, about equal amount of cotton, very nice. To make this, it's very easy. If I use three millimeter coil, then I would cut like that, like that, and then poke it in because you do not want the cotton to be too much. Even if this RBA wicks very well, you do not want this cotton to be too much and if it doesn't wick very well, you can poke your cotton slightly more inside so that you do not completely block for the air to escape. For me, I'm just going to arrange my cotton a bit and then right at the end of my duck, like that. On the other side, same, right at the end of my duck, and like that, done. And if my scissors disturb my cotton to be clumped, once again, I'm just slightly spread it out, the cotton, and then grab my cotton and push it in. Gently, 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 like that. There's no great secret about wicking this R RBA because um, I was gonna say RDA because it just looks like RDA. I think that's the purpose of this RBA because you just, you just wick like RDA and it will just wick great. I mean. It looks really, really great. On the other side, same. Just poke your cotton inside. Like that. And then what I want to make sure for this RBA weekend is that you do not want to disturb the airflow path by the cotton. So if you ever block the airflow path by the cotton, just try to remove it like that. But I didn't block it, so I don't really have to touch. I'm just making sure that it is. It is the same on the opposite side. And yeah, picking is done, building is done. You want to have it like that. And you will notice that if my top of the cotton is in line with my post, it does not actually touch this part because it's not like spit bag, but when you have a new experience flowing into your mouth, that's because your cotton touches the chimney and it just slides in, the juice just slides in with your draw. And I do not want that to happen, that's why I do like that. And um, the juice I'm going to use is pat cinnamon bun and I pulled it out from my borrow glass because yeah, I'm going to do it for the build session. So let's prime it. Oh, 
All right. So it is aiming at 0.43 ohm, which will change when it goes into it because I noticed that if I use integrated drip tip, um, the resistance goes a bit higher. I'm not too sure about that. Why? So if you actually build this coil higher than this, place the chimney first and test fire it so that you prevent shorting inside the burrow because it might be a pain because you have to dump the juice out, pull out your deck and rebuild it. So always make sure to check to see if it fires okay. You can see that there are two engravings going on for your customization. I don't really mind in either way, but yeah, I think I find it cute with this one. So for borrow tank, always make sure, always make sure you lube it up your borrow glass. Always make sure. Also the inside of the burr glass. Yes, and then when it is done, place your bridge first, just like that. And then grab your duck and chamber first and screw your chimney first. And I do not really say like tighten it, but this part you have to tighten it. Just make sure to tighten it because I've noticed that when this o-ring sticks in when my boros is inside, when I want to change change out the drip tip, sometimes it just slides, it just unscrews this part as well. So I hope this part could be joint like like exoset like that because I didn't have any problems when I unscrewed the drip tip I didn't have any problems with this one unscrewing it and this happens more with flush mount because if I just screw it tight like that if I unscrew the flush mount like 50% it started to unscrew this chimney as well, which I do not really enjoy. And it would have been nicer if this was connected with the O-rings. And also for the chimney section, sometimes the condensation builds up inside here. This is not completely flush. There is an angle here so that the condensation can go inside once again which is a nice design touch, but I hope the angle could be a bit um, steeper, but that's just my personal preference. So just slide your deck in. I mean, it is so simple, just so, so simple. And then place your five borrow glass right back in. I hope I'm lucky. Yeah, I'm lucky today because sometimes it is very hard to work with this rubber. And you might have noticed that I always grab this part strong because otherwise it will pull out and you will have just building up here, which you wouldn't want this to happen. Since I finished building it, um, let's clean my dolly inside a little bit, just the dust and also 510. Place your borrow tank. And before you filling out the juice, make sure if your drip tip stays okay when you unscrew this part. If I use flush mount, if I screw this like that, I screwed it completely and since I tightened it, the chimney, I think it won't let this to unscrew 
this time. But let's see. Yes, I am lucky today that it doesn't unscrew, but it happens that it unscrews the chimney. So I'm not going to use the integrated drip tip because I found it slightly uncomfortable with these two thing. I hope it was just flush like Imperia drip tip or um, KHW mode to bar but yeah everyone has different preferences so and I'm going to put my liquids back again yes this is the liquid that I'm using since it is full yeah it already bubbles coming up just slide it in boom and yeah, already bubbles coming up. Yeah, it wicks very, very well. It wicks superb. I'm going to use just this shape drip tip. It's very comfortable. And slide the blast like that. Um, I hope you enjoyed my build session. There were not many things to talk about because it's a really, really easy RBA. Um, I think if anyone starts taping with borrow devices i don't think it can be easier than that i mean i find the exoset to be very easy as well but this one is more user friendly like lots of user friendly features so i find it very awkward so i'm just going to read my script so this is bridge by now sitting inside the dialo d60e this time let's start with the cons I really hate to say this because I put a lot of time on it. The flavor is not as expected as I want. Um, some of you may know that I'm dialing my ITs very precisely writing on my build notes. And when I find a sweet spot for the specific juice, I make a star next to it, for example. For example, for my Skyfall, when I find the sweet spot, I make a star. I make a star on that specific build, like so. I'm sorry that it is all Korean, but I do tickle my build a lot. But for Bridged, there were no stars. Um, there were no stars. I have multiple wires on my desk, like Kanto from 20 gauge to 27 gauge, Nichrome from 24, uh, 23 to 29 and like um, inner wires or conium those are like round wires simple round wires and i have fuse claptons and i have um, many different coils since it was borrowed i could try only like 20 builds but i always prepared with my favorite artists side by side but I could not really find a very very nice vape and here's the reason why. I've avoided borrow systems so far because the RBAs have the same system as RTAs. There's a tank and the cotton is always very saturated, which I do not like as my liquids get sweeter and the flavor starts to lose out because we have very many flavors inside the liquid mostly for dessert liquids but they the note gets sweeter and sweeter and the bottom note just starts to lose out so i always prefer rdas over rtas and if i build my rdas correctly i can use my rdas until my coil is too gunked up but my cotton is still alive that's why I flop my cotton in my own specific way so that I can vape until the cotton is fully white before I go to bed. And the next day, when I vape it, the flavor does not change. But it changes for RDAs because the cotton is always saturated. So I've always thought oral RBAs are always downward compatibility since the form factor is restricted. As I've shown down low, since the depth of the borrow tank is about 40 mm, the outside chamber of the RBA can't be more than 12 mm. 
as the liquid has to pass through the wall of the chamber. The sky's the limit for the RTA, but there's a huge restriction for RBA, how it has to be built in because of the foam factor of the boro tank. So I have avoided the boro systems for quite some time, but I'm going to list the pros for the system later as well. The flavor profile for bridge The flavor profile for bridge is sweeter but loses out some notes that I wish to have on it. If I describe by the Gaussian graph, there's a peak for the fruity note, but for example for the bottom note, it's kind of thinning out. But I wish it could be more flat for the flavor profile. I stopped comparing the test with this with my most used RDAs here after a week like Narda, Narka, Ia, and I only focused on this bridge itself to find the best performance. So the build that I showed you was what I felt the most satisfied with this bridge but I can't tell if it is better than any of my most used RDAs. Airflow can be slightly turbulent inside the chamber which I find it mostly with no doming inside. However, it can be improved to be smoother. If I draw on the iPad, if there's the air hole the air flows into from the bottom. If that is the coil, if the outer gauge of the coil is lower than about 37, for example 36 gauge or 34 gauge, the air meets the separation point and breaks in to here rather than climbing up the bridge. But around 38 gauge that I used, the airflow becomes smoother and it goes like that. However, if there's a dome inside it, the air seems to converge into inside and I find it smoother. And also, as I mentioned in the build session, if your coil is too narrow on the side, the air it's oops my iPad is gone I'm so noob noob okay it's back again so if the air hits the lag of the coil it is very turbulent but if your coil is wider then it hits only the center part of the coil so it becomes smoother because this leg does not disturb the path of the airflow. You do not want to go too large, for example, you do not want to go too large for the coil because it cannot remove the heat from these two sides. It may be fine because the coil starts to light up from here and then it goes like that. You can observe that when you didn't put your wick in and fire it, it starts to glow from the center and it spreads out. But if it is too wide, airflow cannot make it cool. So if the outer gauge of the coil is large for exotic coil, the, the flow of the air hits the chamber rather than passing through the coil. So if you want to have more of a laminar or smooth flow then try to use the outer gauge at least 38 gauge or more and you will find it smoother from the bottom airflow design so there's a clear limit that how smooth it can be because since there's no doming on the chamber but it can still smooth another con is the chimney section which I mentioned down low. It kind of prevents me to use my own 510 drip tip like that because if I unscrew 
this flush mount, it unscrews the chimney as well. So this could be resolved if the chimney is held with the O-ring like Exosat V2 that I showed you down low. And also as I mentioned, the positive post could have been thicker than this. It was like that when I received from my friend. And if this part could have been wider, it would have been more sturdy, I would expect. Okay, let's start with the pros. Finally pros. I'm sorry for being quite critical, but there are surely a lot of pros on this RBA as well. This bridge is very user-friendly. Um, you just build like an RDA and it works. As I mentioned down low, there are a lot of software designs going on on the easiness of changing out the airflow pans, the cutout for cut to stay, and the full of useful packages including the part to unscrew the 510 to clean it out, integrated trip tip, lots of airflow pans, the lovely rubber part to slide the bar glass, even for the users who like enjoying dressing up their gears, um, the button and two different engravings for Panda either side of the RBA. Um, from now on, this is going to be very subjective. I still don't like the bro system. Since I have to keep my hands with liquids when I put out the RBA and it takes a few steps for me to vape. Like screwing the deck on the 510 adapter and build it and move it to the bro tank and screw the 510 drip tip, etc. I mean, I don't really see the point of it. There are many great RTAs out there and I have used um, Badiblum, Imperia, Integra, Nyline. Great artists. For me, Burrow device is more like for a user who likes to customize their device with different panels, etc. Like an adult version of Barbie dolls. Since the form factor of side-by-side -side plus RTA is smaller. And more comfortable such as my Stratton Balance plus RTA. However, I do respect that also since everyone has different preferences. But just my perspective is extremely subjective as I'm a flavor chaser and functionality and easiness are the key things for me. So this user-friendly design of this RBA makes a lot of things easier. Having only a few parts make things very easy to clean and disassemble and reassemble. I think it is very well made with a lot of thoughts going on. So my cone is mostly for the bore systems, not for this bridge itself. I've seen a lot of struggles about the condensation, but the thing is, I don't have any condensations, including bridged or exosad. Um, so one tip I could give you is that also my friend who brought me this bridge. When my friend vaped my build for like an hour, it had the condensation built up under the 510. But if I vape it, if I vape like that for three days, there's no condensation built up. For example, if I stick my cotton bud inside, It is absolutely clean. My tip is that how I vape is taking a puff about 0.5 seconds first to open up the gate of the flow of the air before I switch the fire button. And then when I switch it off, I take about 0.5 to 1 seconds to suck all the clouds inside the chamber and the chimney. This way you will not get the condensation at all after using about three days. So how I vape is... Look at my finger. <laughs> 
so I just don't leave any sort of cloud inside the chimney and the chamber and there wouldn't be any condensation. To finish up, let's use the integrated drip tip and show you how it looks like for your interest. And this is how it looks like. This is how it this is how it looks like with the integrated drip tip. You can see a lot of bubble trains and it works really, really, really well. And I think it is very well made. I hope it could have given more flavorful vape that I hope to enjoy. I'm a dessert user, so I'm having quite complex liquids with lots of flavors in it. But if you vape with like one flavor in it, I think it'll be still an enjoyable vape for you. So. I hope this review has been useful. Thank you for watching up to this far. I'm pretty sure if I edit this, it'll be quite a long review, but thank you. <laughs>